my Alucab Gen 3 Expedition rooftop tent developed a significant rain leak within four years of ownership. I found the source of the leaking and then I substantially fixed it for the long term. I was able to repair it from the outside without having to do anything internally on the tent. But in the process of fixing the leaks, I decided to overall the entire tent internally, including some wiring and some other things. Here's how I did it. In the beginning of 2019, I bought an Alucab Gen 3 Expedition rooftop tent. I had it shipped to my painter and the uh, bare metal version so that he could color match it to the blue bed liner that I had done my entire truck with. So got it all done, threw in bedding, got my camping gear together, went on a couple of quick trips to make sure the weight of it worked with my rack and the awning test and then I went and did a bunch of camping trips over the years all over multiple states. Then on this trip I opened up the tent last year and it was soaking wet inside. I thought it was a fluke. I thought maybe on my last trip I put it away in the rain. I couldn't remember, but it had been sitting wet for a while. So I air dried out for a couple hours. Rest of that trip, it was fine. I didn't think about it. But before my next trip, I opened it up again and it was even more wet and we'd had a bunch of rain. I'm like, this is odd. I've had this thing for four years now and not a drop. And all of a sudden it's wet every time and started doing some research and realizing that others were having issues with the top seal on the roof aging and eventually splitting and leaking. So I looked into it, got up on the tent, took a look, and I did see some gapage. Needless to say, I was pretty bummed out about seeing all that moisture. Also, by the next trip, it had grown a bunch of black mold and it was all stained and spotted. The mattress was ruined. I had a nice, you know, custom four inch thick foam mattress. The fabric inside, outside, everything within the rubber seal had just sat in water for a long time and grown a ton of mold. The smell immediately um, just made me start sneezing, coughing. It was, it was dangerous. So after talking it all over with Steel Toe, we, we uh, chatted back and forth about this for a bit and came up with a great plan to um, take the tent off the truck and grind the entire top seal. So there's, there's a metal edging all the way around that curves around the side of the tent and then there's a solid rectangular top panel that's like a, a diamond plate kind of a pattern. Where those two meet, it's a seal and there is sealant in between and then usually there's powder coat over the top and that kind of seals it. Well, eventually it dries out, it retracts. I live in Arizona, so there's a lot of expansion and contraction and it just splits and it starts seeping moisture inside. So we decided we can fix this thing. We can over reseal it. I don't care cosmetically to perfectly color match or anything. Just want to clean it up in a straight line to a nice, wide, really heavy duty UV resistant seal, fix it all up and then I'm just going to overhaul the entire interior while I'm at it, make this thing better than new. So that's what we did. It's going to be much easier to work on this tent if it's lower to the ground. So we put it to the lift, put the arms in under the tent, and we just unbolted the rack from the bed. So it'll be a lot easier to just lift the whole assembly off. And we're going to pull the truck out, set the thing on the floor on these rolling casters so we can move it around, spin it, push it inside, outside, do whatever we need to do with it. So here we're taking off the rails to get to the full four-sided seam on the top two um, sections of the metal. There's an outer section of metal that meets an inner flat section. We unbolted the rail because when we took it off the seam, you can really see the gaps in the material. So we're going to be cleaning and resealing all that that's separated put new adhesive down, bolt them back down, and totally do the whole printer. All right, so we're gonna try a couple things. One is, 
here's some wire wheel and another is this paint stripper it's really firm and like epoxy grit Let's see which one works better uh, wire wheel is probably going to be the one that does the job we're just going to follow along all the way around clean it up got the bare metal the steel tin is putting some really protective tape over the edges some big yellow boundary yeah, this is a perfect case of wire wheel slips so we don't want to hit the solar panel Ah, you got a metal cube. <laughs> oh, again, look at that. Ouch. Oh. Oh. Okay, there is some putty down in there, which I'm just going in and scraping it out. We can get down a little more to metal for a better bond with the Cicaplex. So here's the final pass. Clean the goober out that it chiseled. Just to make sure there's bare metal the whole way. That entire top seam between those two layers of metal has all been ground down clean. Metal's roughed up, the paint's roughed, we smoothed it, we cleaned it, so we wiped it down. Now we're masking it with frog tape. Gonna have a pretty wide uh, adhesive seal because I wanted to have a very thorough bond. So not only are we gonna squeeze the adhesive down in the seam, um, as you can see here, we're laying the first bead and then I'm coming behind with a flat side of my finger and just kind of pressing that down into that void in between um, just to make sure that it sinks in there really well before we do the second coat of adhesive to make a really wide band of coverage. So after that first run around and pressing it in, we do a thick second bead to just kind of massage that in to the entire seam, cover it up with a second layer and also start spreading the width of it. So we get a good bond with all of that um, edge material that has been ground down with the wire wheel. This part looks really messy, uh, it looks ugly, but I'm trusting that the tape will do its job. That Cicaflex is really thick stuff, so it's not like when you're masking for painting a wall where that, that paint's real thin and can run underneath, because it, that is a textured top to the tent. So there could be bleed if this was a thinner product we we're putting on, but it's pretty thick. Um, I didn't care much about the blue paint because I had some refinishing to do on that, so a little I smeared a little bit here and there. But I just went around and massaged it in a good couple of times as it was uh, staying workable. And here I go over it with just a plastic putty knife to just press it in one more good time, but making sure not to carve any uh, voids or anything into it. So here it is, all with the masking tape pulled off. Ignore that little corner there. That was the uh, parking garage I backed into and fixed with epoxy. But yeah, that's what it looks like. So I wanted about a one inch wide coverage. There's a little extra uh, under the rails. We put the rails back on properly on top of it after it set a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the entire perimeter is now done.
So we bring the tent back inside into the nice cool shop, open it up, and it's time to medically disinfect this thing. It needs a lot of mold stain removal and just for health reasons needs to be disinfected completely. So we wipe it all down with terry towels soaked in this medical grade cleaner to get ready to overhaul all of the internal wiring, fix some lights, get rid of the corrosion, and kind of beef up the power supply to this thing. Oh, and put a couple more extra USB chargers in at the same time. I had already removed the old bedding because it was so mildew stained, I just threw it away. So we have a nice clean floor to work with. So I unrivet and unbolt all the attachments that hold the little power junction box and looked underneath the factory foam flooring and it's just nasty, old dried adhesive. There's probably mildew, so I'm gonna deal with that later. For my goal to drive better power into here to power more chargers and inside lights and whatnot, I wanted to, really wanted to do this Anderson plug that was underneath. That it was installed with this. And granted, there are no screws, it was just rivets, so more. More rivets to drill out. The rivets actually go through the block and then up into the roof, and then there's just a hole drilled. Well, this gauge wire that's on here, what is that, maybe? Heavily shielded 18, 14. Anyways, I happen to have a bag of these and they're brand new in the connectors. So we're gonna do a brand new head that will rivet up through there, replace this. Yep, there it is. So I'm gonna put a brand new one on. Bought this set because I built my own Anderson to Anderson to go from the tent to my, my bedside. So we're gonna run 12 gauge shielded that's actually in colors we know and I mean you can see the difference a lot more insulation bigger gauge carry more amps I'm not drawing a lot I'm just gonna have a couple of high-speed high USB chargers they're low draw one of the uh, National Luna or whoever makes those touch lights those are super low draw too but all of this really chintzy skinny wire that was in here and it, i mean i just completely hodgepodge so i'm replacing this socket with another usb i straighten this box out which i beat up last time i was trying to take it off reconnect and obviously not just solder and electrical tape that was embarrassing so i'm gonna have high speed usb this one i don't like because it has a this one has a push button so every time i get in here and plug in the tent i have to push that button i just want it to be on all the time so I'm replacing that with a constant on high speed, constant on high speed. So when the tent is plugged in at the Anderson, this is activated. I'm getting rid of these because I never used them. I don't like them. I like the overhead. It's all I need. So these are coming out of the circuit and getting set aside for whatever else. And I'm also going to put a hole over here and have a power port going out to my little fuse box that's going to run along and under the foam there's a uh, another touch light under there under there and then i've got two like trailer lights under here that are powered by the switch so those four lights instead of this super tiny like little 22 gauge which i got this to match the gauge of the really tiny little leads that come out of these lights i don't know why they're so tiny but i need bigger gauge to carry the amps to get to those little connectors so just beefing up wires, insulation, taping everything down, um, getting it all ready to put a new mattress over it all. And it's just gonna be secure and waterproof. So this little joke in the center wire is now gonna be this. The new head. So I'm gonna snap it in and get it going. Okay. We've got a nice, what is this, four gauge? Eight, I don't know what it is, but way bigger. So that's coming in the Anderson plug through a nice grommet under the foam, like totally improved. This is gonna cover any amperage I ever need to draw in. Just completely 
completely overhauled the Anderson plug. So it's back in its factory position, but it has a much larger power input, which will match. I made a jumper out of this that goes from my truck power into the tent. So the beauty of that is that I have all of the current I'll ever need for the small devices that are in here. So I'm just taking out my USBs, putting in the new ones I got, getting rid of this lighter socket and putting in another USB. Then I'm gonna drill a hole in this and put another port and that's that. So time to clean up the mess. So as we always do, we end up talking through things a bunch of times and coming up with better and better ways. And this idea is fantastic. So hopefully it works better. All right. So what we're going to do is instead of coming in the main line and going in this box and hooking and then having another line come out and go to this bus bar, we're going to go through a breaker. So the positive is going to go through this outside be a master shutoff in case I'm in here and it catches fire or I need to kill power I can just break and the positive is going to come out and go to the positive side of the bus bar the negative is going to come around the other side of the bus bar these two are going to be out and mounted behind back here somewhere and then out of one of these six channels, we're gonna have 12 gauge come in the hall to power the USBs. Cause that's really all it's gonna be in this box. Now there's no lights or anything. Then this bus bar in the corner is going to, the other channels will go out to the under lighting the above lighting. And then I'll have a couple open for future whatever's that I might wanna wire up in here. And that's gonna be the cleanest with a, with a nice breaker shut off, coat and safety. Granted, the, the system that comes to the tent is fused and everything else for protection, but just in case, it's nice to have something I know where it's going to be in the corner and I can just kill. Well, we kind of ran out of time for the day on this project. Uh, the wiring is really tedious, you know, just the disassembly of that little box and hammering it all flush again and fixing it from the last work I did on it just overhauling all the wiring and, and a few extra things it took a lot of time so we closed up the tent um, I'm gonna finish the wiring another day probably uh, just in my driveway but here she is closed up and reconditioned so that resurfacing cleaning up and re-oiling of the bed liner just rehydrates it and brings it right back to that same color again and, and lasts for a while so this one's a different treatment it's a it's a wood oil treatment with a um, kind of a clear coat that sets on it and I'm real happy with it so far. I'm actually at the time of putting this together. It's already been on there for a couple weeks and it's it's rock hard like clear coat and it's beautiful color. So very happy with the outcome of today's part of the project. Uh, I'm going to continue on with a little bit more interior disinfection cleanup, floor stripping and wiring in the next section. So stay tuned. Everything that needed to be done with the tent uh, to have it down at ground level has been done today. So the complete reconditioning of the exterior, the fixing of the, the leaky seam up top, um, 
got a chance to kind of inspect the, the solar connectors, realized I need to replace uh, both connectors on there. They're getting a little dry and brittle. I'll do that later on with the step stool. So again here we put the wheel jacks under the tires. So instead of continuing to reposition the truck back and forth, back and forth, just put the wheel jacks under it and literally push the truck exactly in the right position to line up with the mounting holes on the bed rack. Um, that probably saved a half an hour easily of moving around. This way we can just drop the lift straight in place and bolt it on and get me out of there. Brought the truck home, parked it in the driveway, opened up the tent that night and aired it out for a good couple of days just to get rid of the yuck smell that was still kind of lingering in it. So it's time to clean it up. So I grabbed some terry towels. I put some of that medical cleaner in a spray bottle and open the flaps and just start going to town, scrubbing off all the inside. So the outside of the tent is completely done. Um, but again, trying to kill mold and prevent it from growing back ever again. And just for you know health sake, I'm just gonna go over it a couple of times with that cleaner, basically use it all up. So here I start on the doors and this is what the mildew looks like when we first open it up in the shop after it had been sitting. So that's what I'm scrubbing off and you can kind of see in here that the panels are already gray, that, uh, that cleaner is not only disinfecting but it is taking those stains right out and the fabric looks brand new. So while you're bored sitting here watching me clean mold off of a tent, I will tell you that I have already finished the wiring secured the, the boxes that we designed and made all the connections and ran stronger, better leads, waterproofed everything to all the tent lighting that's mounted underneath and also the dome light up there. Um, so that's all done. So I'm just finishing cleaning up and getting the floor ready for new foam that I've ordered from Foam Factory and just continuing to air this thing out for a couple of days. So wiring's in. And I'm going to keep working on finishing cleaning and you'll see the new floor here coming up soon. So the touch light is, was replaced. I had one of these up here before I had a spare one, but with the moisture it, and corroded out, it would still power up, but it would not, couldn't control cycling through. And so now, Thumbs on low, medium, high, and white. Press and hold. You get orange, low, medium, and high. The orange is really nice at night, especially when you're getting it out of the tent. Not only is it not hard on the eyes, but the bugs don't run to it. So, touch light is up. So I ran, I loomed, reinforced the wire, ran larger, larger gauge. I think it was a 16 gauge. Fully shielded, so you're just zip ties holding the, the, the loom. Runs back behind the pocket, comes out in this corner, just ran a zip tie. There's really no way to clip or secure. I don't want to drill in because there's only certain support rails, so I just did it that way. Just kind of jammed it in the corner, kind of tucked in there. So here I'm going to put a little bracket or something, um, just bolt it to the, to the metal and just put a screw in down here on this flange with a loop and close it. But it's all loomed, runs underneath. There's these nice pass-throughs in the supports. After cleaning up all of the mildew that was all inside, it was down to the, uh, the factory real thin foam rubber bottom which was adhered to the floor so I was doing some wiring um, pulling back corners I noticed that there was still some moisture underneath and just just some stains of mildew and the adhesive had just petrified so being concerned that there were mold spores in here, I mean, I've sterilized everything and then the, the cleanser was underneath. So it was neutralized, but I just felt like it needed a little bit more cleanup. So I'm coming in here, 
with the angle grinder with a flapper disc, with a 120 grit flapper disc, to remove as much of this adhesive as I can without getting any wires and you know not over overdoing any any rivets or anything. So I'm just gonna do a light pass to just knock off this crusty adhesive. Then I'm going to vacuum it out with the shop vac and then wipe it down with a damp towel to clean out as much debris as I can. I'll probably spray a little bit more of the medical grade cleaner in here just to make sure there's no more dormant spores that could crop back up as moisture builds up in here from just condensation. So time to angle grind. I made sure I was really careful here because of the thin aluminum floor, but I wanted to get that obnoxious dried glue. So yeah, 120 grit flapper disc. I just did it real light, one or two passes, just kind of one-handed. Um, it looks like a horrible pattern, but in person it actually was cleaning it perfectly. It was creating a ton of dust, which I was breathing in, and it tasted bitter. I probably should have worn respiration equipment, but I didn't. Um, but I just wanted to get as much of that stuff off without scraping it with a putty knife or something and getting all that dust out and just vacuuming every bit I could and the fabric and it was just all over the place. But I'm gonna follow that up with the, uh, with the damp cloth wipe down. So just finishing the shop vac, moving things out of the way. Then I just did a little soap and a little bit more of that disinfectant. And with a terry towel, just started wiping that whole tub out. So I know I was eliminating all of the mold and debris. So the base foam got here today. It's a little oversized, so it's, it's about a, almost a foot wider than the tent. That's kind of the way it's sold. And you can just order it by the foot. So. I ordered seven feet, so it's enough to do the full length plus a little extra. So I think with the extra width, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to cut some. So I'll just utility knife what I need. I'm, I'm going to lay it out, I'm gonna unroll, lay it out, and it will flare up the sides a little bit. I think I'm going to trim it off a little long so I can actually have it tuck up the sides here and kind of cover up some of the side metal as well. A little bit of extra insulation from the bare metal um, might make a little difference. You know, condensation. I don't know. Got the material, so that's how I'm going to cut it. So here we go. I was really glad that I got this polystyrene half inch foam, but a little bit oversized, which worked well because I was able to tuck it up the sides of the tub a little bit as I was cutting. So I got a little bit more side insulation in that bottom tub. But it's super comfy, that half inch, I can kneel on it and everything. So when I have my four inch mattress on top of that, um, I'm definitely never gonna hit bottom on the hard floor when I have to kneel. I didn't bother gluing this foam in. It kind of wedged in place and really stayed in there nice. Here's some of that floor foam, just kind of roughly cut around some of the electronics so it doesn't get in the way of anything. A couple days later, my new four inch mattress arrived, open it up, let it expand. I aired it out in the garage on some cardboard boxes and then put it in and it fit perfect. A four inch thick, medium density foam mattress works really well in there. As you can see, it, it fills up the, the, the depth of the tub without going over the lip. So um, you get a nice full mattress throughout the entire basin of the tent. So here it is with the fresh new sheet and two new pillows and pillowcases. And everything just fits great, ready for camping. Oh, and before I put any bedding and redid all the wiring, I did this leak test on the seal when I got home from the shop. Rigged my hose up there on a sprinkle and ran it for a couple hours and just let the water cascade off all sides to see if any water creeped in from the rooftop. And no surprise, it worked like a charm. So to recap the process of actually fixing the leaky tent, which was the original project for working on my allo cap. Um, step one, identifying where the leak was coming from. And I looked at everything, considered all their seams. When I got up on top of the tent and looked at the actual four-sided seam that goes between the edge metal and then the, the middle rectangle metal, I, I noticed visible um, gaps between the old dried paint and everything. So um, step two was preparing that, using an angle grinder with a wire wheel, cleaning all the 
paint and old sealant off of those seams to get them prepared to take on uh, some Cicaflex. And then step three was sealing it up. Using that Cicaflex with two coats and using some masking tape to make straight lines, I sealed it back up. Step four was any mounting bolts for any external accessories, my awning, uh, light bar, whatnot, I wanted to seal. So I took the bolts and nuts off, put silicone sealant on those nuts and bolts and around the holes, tightened it all back down to make sure no water could get in those as well. And she's done. And the testing worked and proved that this was my problem. So I hope this helps you out and thanks for watching.